Nuts, that all. No, don't do that. Stop cutting me off. You just said on live. I want to hear. I want to hear. Because you, you just, just laughed. You just said on live and told a nigga, let a nigga tell you, you ready to expose Goofy Dude, man, how he be running and doing this and doing this, how he be running for y'all, how y'all used to chase him. You need to leave the city, they, unless they gonna get you. What? You hear me? I'm the one with all the problems. If I hear that shit one more time in my life, I'm like, he look like he broke your jaw, boy. That shit gonna, that shit gonna blow me. I mean, since our last interview, uh, this guy named KTS Dre was walking out of Cook County Jail mm -hmm. and he got shot 34 times. The rumor was 64. But it, it took the coroner like three months to even it, his figure out. probably came in and out. Yeah, so it, looked it like was 64 just, shots. there were so and, many shots. And like, I literally, know, they, like me personally, y'all didn't like him. One seemingly calm night in July 2021, Landre Sylvester, more commonly known by his street name, KTS Dre, walked out of Cook County Jail in Chicago, less than 36 hours after his fiance posted his bail, after being locked up for over a month for violating the conditions of his probation, he was finally going home to serve out the rest of his sentence on house arrest. Unfortunately, he never made it back home that night. Less than an hour after he was released, he was hit in an incident now known to many as one of the most gruesome public hits the city of Chicago has seen in the past decade. During the attack, a 60-year-old woman who was with Dre at the time was also shot, as well as a 35-year-old bystander who happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Following the grisly hit, it took the coroner three months to even count exactly how many bullets had gone through KTS Dre's body. The total was later revealed to be 34 bullets. For the cops, it's still unknown who was responsible for his passing, and no arrests have been made to this day. During his life, Dre was a vicious man with no shortage of enemies, and police have had a hard time finding any solid leads that point to a specific direction. As of 2023, the search for Dre's assailant is still active. The weeks, months, and years leading up to July 2021 had been tough on KTS Dre. Since 2008, he had been arrested a total of 22 times for everything ranging from gun charges to dope charges and a little bit of everything in between. As of December 2020, he had been on house arrest with a GPS tether after he got busted carrying a 9mm Glock pistol while on parole for a 2015 gun conviction in which he allegedly wrestled with two cops for a gun. At one point, it looked like things were looking up for Dre when the judge granted him four hours of freedom each Thursday to run errands. But Cook County Sheriff's officials claimed he'd violated those conditions by taking the freedom to visit other places in Chicago and Wisconsin. Obviously, that wasn't part of the deal, and as soon as his parole officer realized what he was doing, he was immediately locked up at Cook County Jail in early June 2021. About a month later, on June 9th, his fiance posted his $5,000 bail. The plan was for Dre to get back on house arrest after being released on the night of July 10th. But something happened that night that took things in a much darker direction. After the police fitted his ankle with an electronic monitoring device, he left the jail with the 60-year-old woman who many sources claim was his grandmother. On his way to the car and practically tasting the freedom he'd enjoy away from prison, things took an extremely dark turn. At about 8.50 p.m., as he was walking down the 2700 block of South California Avenue, two cars suddenly pulled up next to him and multiple gunmen emerged from the vehicles. Before he even had time to react, the gunman opened fire on him and the woman who was with him. Seconds later, the hitmen sped off in their cars, leaving behind the bullet-riddled body of KTS Dre, 
who was rushed to Mount Sinai Hospital, where he was sadly pronounced deceased on the spot from dozens of bullet wounds to the face, neck, chest, and other areas of the body. Tragically, the 60-year-old woman who was with him at the time also got shot in the knees, but she luckily recovered soon after the incident at Stroger Hospital. The second innocent person of the gruesome attack was a 35-year-old woman who was standing nearby. Although she was grazed in the mouth by the stray bullet, she later recovered from her injuries as well. In the aftermath of the crime, the cops roped off the streets outside Crook County Jail, which was covered with shell casings. Disturbingly, Dre's shirt was still visible on the sidewalk that led to the exit of the detention center. Following the gruesome hit, the police had their work cut out for them. It wouldn't be easy to find Dre's assailants. After all, Dre wasn't exactly a saint when he was alive, and he had no shortage of opponents who wanted to take him out. For the cops, finding the assailants would prove to be like finding a needle in a haystack. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Chicago-born rapper 600 Breezy once revealed that Dre had threatened to end the life of his son and his girlfriend for no significant reason. That's the kind of man KTS Dre was, always pushing his opponents to the limits of their patience, and he was known for his volatility and ruthlessness. During the investigation into Dre's passing, the cop revealed that he had a total of 64 bullet holes in his body, but the coroner later clarified that because some of those were exit wounds, he was really shot a total of 34 times. The excessive nature of the crime proved to the cops just how much Dre's opponents in the streets wanted him gone. As attacking a man who had just walked out of jail and was still under the direct supervision of the police by filling him up with almost three dozen bullets is an almost surefire way to end up in prison. Clearly, whoever carried out the attack was willing to sacrifice their freedom just to see Dre perish. As the investigation progressed, one of the questions cops had a hard time answering was, how did anyone know when and where he was getting released? Dre's sister said the words everyone was thinking when she posted on Instagram saying, somebody gave his drop. No way they knew when he was getting out and walking out. Y'all are snakes. Ain't none of y'all cutthroat. Although some of Dre's friends shared the sentiments and expressed their condolences online, others took the opportunity to show disdain towards him, including No Limits Cairo, one of Dre's opponents with whom he shared a legendary rivalry. A few years back, Dre and younger brother KTS Vaughn had gone viral after releasing a video they recorded where they could be seen confronting several members of No Limits gang, including the then 14-year-old Cairo. At one point in the video, Dre walked up to Cairo and punched him square in the jaw. Allegedly, Cairo then went outside and opened fire on Dre, who was also known at the time as Cutthroat Draco. This was the incident that sparked a 10-year-long beef between Kill to Survive and No Limits Gang. This rivalry, among many others, caused Dre to experience two of the most traumatic losses of his life. In 2015, Dre appeared on Kill to Survive, his brother Vaughn's most popular song, in which they dissed several deceased members of opposing gangs throughout the track, three of which Vaughn was suspected of having hit himself. Less than two months after the release of the song, Vaughn was found lying lifeless on the street. In July of the next year, a 19-year-old walked up to Dre and Vaughn's dad's car and hit him, also injuring the 22-year-old woman who was in the seat next to him. Over the years, Cairo and Dre would have several more confrontations, which sometimes took place on Instagram Live. In February 2021, a few months before the hit, Cairo and Dre went live together, and they went back and forth for several minutes, arguing about which of the two was more feared in the streets. Five months after that conversation, Dre was deceased, and Cairo didn't waste a second to throw some more dirt on his name. Right after Dre's passing, Cairo posted several pictures on Instagram where he seemed genuinely devastated by KTS Dre's passing. But just hours later, he started posting screenshots of conversations in which other people asked him about the legendary McDonald's incident. 
In the conversation, Kyra replied that Dre's friend should tell him to go beat him up again. Fearing for the safety of his friends and family, Dre's mother, Lanya Sylvester, even had to cancel the farewell service out of fear that No Limit Gang and some of Dre's other opponents would interrupt the service and open fire, something that several members of Cutthroat had been alleged of doing years earlier to No Limit Gang. With three members of Sylvester's family deceased, the only surviving brother is KTS Vinny, who's been locked up since 2014 for a shooting and is currently serving a 14-year sentence. In a heartbreaking letter, Vinny perfectly captured the essence of the lifestyle that had claimed the life of his entire family. He said, I had everyone when I left. Now who am I coming home to? Overall, Dre's passing was a harsh reminder that you can never be too paranoid in the streets and that those who live by the sword die by the sword. Even though KTS Dre was known for being vicious, conflictive, and dangerous, he didn't deserve the fate that befell him. Hopefully with time, the police will eventually find the assailant and bring him to justice. Until then, rest in peace, KTS Dre.